Morning, fellas. Welcome back to the old Two Sugar YouTube channel. My name's Wayne, and well, today, today we're working on junk. So, last video you see me get it all uh, flushed out. I've been I had been repeatedly flushing it. Matter of fact, I'm still flushing it, but the water's getting there. We're almost clear. So what I'm doing now? I just got it hot, flushed it again. Uh, got it up to temp we're gonna set this governor uh i don't have any clue how to do it but the engine's warm so there's no time like the present so let's see if we can't figure this out together eh? all right fellas you can tell we're jumped right in here so the first step doing this by the book move the governor cover loosen all this i didn't loosen this because i wanted to verify that my rack setting was indeed off and it is it's way off i'll show you in a second so first thing you do Take this apart and you remove this knob right here i hope you guys can see me move this knob here then there's a lock nut behind it there'll be threads sticking out of it you can see here thread sticking out of it and you want three sixteenths of threads which is one eight seven five i use the micrometer one eight point one eight seven five sticking out then you put your nut back on, then you put your knob back on and tighten the lock nut. So we've done that. Next thing I did is I got in here and I wanted to get a look at this. So now if you can see, our number two injector is way loose. Number one is tight, but we're supposed to start with number two. So we are gonna back these right off. I like to back them off quite a bit. That's just how I roll. And then we're gonna do like the book says, and we're gonna set our number one first, or our number two first. All right, next step. What you gotta do is set your two screws on the injector control rack here on the number two injector, equal in height and tight, because those float on there so much you'll never get the right setting out of this thing without doing that first so set them tighten them down then you'll notice your injectors tight so then we move on to the next one we hold it full fuel and then we're going to set our secondary oh we were right there too wow look how sensitive that is you can watch it back the other one off Gump, you are a genius. God damn it, Gump! You're a goddamn genius! So, now we're squared away there. She's tight. She's tight also. That's beautiful. So then where we go from here, we turn the page. This is page two. says to make sure your, bolt, your injectors bolt tight you can watch as you come in you could see them turn that's what you want oh yeah it's perfect fellas absolutely perfect dialed that right together okay done now we loosen the lock nut 
here at the end of the fuel rod, which I found out why they had this running. If you remember from when we first diagnosed these stuck injectors, this is rubbing here. You could see all the wear on it. They got this twisted and I don't think it's in the right position. So we're going to have to remedy that while we're here too. There she goes. That's what we want. Just like that. So now, see how that's loose? That's what you want. We'll hold this in no fuel, which is where it is. And then we adjust this to where it slides in and out of the no fuel. So let's see. Got a ways to go yet. That's a little bit too far. That's wicked tight in there. It shouldn't be that tight. Um, see how that kind of sticks? I don't. I'm not 100% sure it should really be like that. I'm going to do a little investigating on why that's so tight, and I'll bring it back. Where it falls, well, as you can tell here, things have got drastically out of hand. The rod is bending and binding. I, I can't trace that uh, clicky, hard movement is somewhere in the top of the governor. Not in, not in this part, in the top half where the rod is. I think I found it. Let me bring in the shop and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I wanna keep this covered. This is a sensitive part. It, uh, it's got an oil, it's, it's got its own oil pump in there and we don't need to ruin it. So. Let's see here what we can do. I'm just gonna set the valve cover back on. Bolt it down real quick because I don't like. I don't want to leave this just exposed like this. We gotta. I gotta refer to the service manual anyway. So let me show you what I found. I think somebody's been in here and they haven't been doing me any favors so hang tight all right boys let's see if i can get in here there's a couple pieces of this assembly first of all this tube has to slide through here but more importantly you can see it already I can't push it through there. It's very hard right now. It's very hard to push. So this is problem number one. Let me show you why. Get it back in there. Now watch it. Watch this end. See that? It's bent as shit. That's problem number one. Got a straight edge here in the vise. You see all the light under there? And then again over here. Now look as you rotate it, there's light here. This thing's bent in like four places. We're gonna be real lucky if we can straighten this thing, honestly. It's been here and it's bent there. So I'm gonna have some time in trying to straighten this. That's first, that's the first issue. The second issue that we had, I don't know if you could tell when I pulled on it, but you would pull it back and then it would click and go a little further. That was because the spring was incorrectly located in the shutdown spring. And what I mean by that is, so this assembly goes together like this. Okay, this side's in the governor here like this. This is your locating tit for the back of this spring, like that. 
A big spring goes over top. Okay. Then it slides into here. Like that. And then very carefully, you send that home through there, okay? Now what had happened is exactly what's happening right now. You see that thing there? Last person put this together. Somebody's been in here, I promise you that. Last person put this together had that thing flipped around. So, like just like that, it was binding on one of the spring coils and that's what was making that snap noise. And I don't think the hydraulic side of the governor had enough power to pop it over that hump and get it to full fuel. Um, so that was that was problem number two. So we've got two two issues with this thing. And it's a good thing we took it apart. So I'm going to straighten these parts out. I'm not going to mess around trying to do that on camera. It's going to suck. I need both hands and probably a beer. So I'm going to do that. I will bring you back. Here, fellas. Just actually a couple minutes, actually, really all that took. Huh? Huh? Gump, you're a genius. Now, I don't think it's perfect, but it's also probably never, ever gonna be perfect, so we're gonna friggin' send it. All right. So this has got to kind of go like that. This. Kind of goes like that. This is a lot easier without that friggin' spring in there, fellas. I think our thing is still in the right orientation. So now we just gotta get it to where we can get it. Oh, let's guess this. This has gotta be. Got it. We weren't stuck. Actually. Hmm. There we go. Wow, that sucks. All right, enough of the negativity. Let's see what, what we got here. All right, there's that. Now, let's do this real quick. Eighteen eighty-five is close enough to eighteen seventy-five for who it's for. Okay, now we need the knob. Perfect, we'll do another one turn. Oh, and that should put us right where we gotta be. Do it like that. Okay, and then we'll take. I should have to pull on this a little bit. Yeah, see that? It just slides right in. I don't got a beat on it no more. All right, fellas, well, next up is adjusting the load limit. All right, 20 thou, that'll work. Now, 
I've had this thing draining here for a while. So we'll button it back up, get some cooling in it, and fire it back up, see how she runs. It does feel 10 times better. There's no frictiony scraping feeling that I was getting before. All right, boys. Oh shit, I'm almost out of beer. All righty, she's running. Don't know if you can hear it. I'm sure you can. Oh shit, I gotta get my light. It sounds like it's really screaming anyway like I was saying I know it sounds like it's really screaming but trust me okay it's too strong dead nuts boys honestly it should be up higher than that I'm gonna have to adjust it needs to be like 1900 with no load See there, 60. We're bouncing 61 hertz. Runs nice now. It was. I, I should have videoed the startup, but I was just anxious to get it going. It was much crisper. That dial was much more sensitive. Really felt a lot better. So I'm super anxious to get it under a load. I really think that's going to come alive. So now earlier when I was running it. I was running it forever and I couldn't get it over 160. So I'm really hoping it's the same way. I'm hoping that adjusting the rack and giving the thing full power isn't gonna hit me on the coolant side and show more of a weakness than there already is. The water's starting to clear up. It's still muddy brown, but it's not gooey anymore. I think I'm gonna end up dumping the water like 10 times. This is the fourth or fifth now. better I'm real happy with it we'll find out whether or not I'm any good at my job when we get it under a load um, see what happens but uh I'll keep you posted it's starting to get dark there's no point in recording anymore uh, I'll probably dump the coolant one, one or more one or two more times tonight at least and uh, well it's just water but you know what I'm saying and uh, I'll keep you posted if anything cool happens all right fellas here's where we're at give you an update i have got 30 year old toilets in my house that have been flushed less than this generator has by this point uh he saw me do the acid in the radiator the radiator was coming out perfectly clear so we reinstalled it and saw all that well then i ran it a couple times drained it. it was still getting brown schmoo still getting brown schmoo so then i put a 32 ounces of that uh, radiator flush stuff, ran it for like an hour, dumped it out, still brown, still brown, flush it five more times, still brown. I ended up taking and putting, uh, I went to Napa and got the Max 1400, it's like a corrosive uh, radiator flush. Got two jars of that, put that in there, run it for another hour. Um, uh, mind you, it's only a two gallon, two and a half gallon system. Um, and then I've been power flushing it. Probably put 25 gallons through it today at least, if not 30. Um, here's what we got. I pulled it apart, took all the hoses off. At this point, I want to just replace all the hoses. Uh, it's, and I'm finally starting to get somewhere. It's, it's starting to, I mean, it's still schmooey, but if you look, it's 
mostly clear. It's just got a tint to it. And I mean, it's just straight water at this point. There's nothing in here that's gonna hurt anybody. But then we're still getting some schmoo. Now, some of that isn't from it. Uh, I had a bunch of rags and stuff out here while I was cleaning up that kind of just got tossed around and tossed shit in the bucket, too. That's where we're at. At least, at least I'm on my way. I'll get the hoses put on it. We're waiting, waiting on some rain today, so this is going to be it for me for today. Uh, but I thought I'd give you guys an update. It still doesn't cold start worth a shit. I don't know if she's just got some low compression pistons in her or what, but no bueno. Like everything else around here, it loves the ether. So... That's where we're at with that. It does seem to run better. I'm anxious to get it under a load and see how that is, if it's better. Uh, never set one of these governors up, which we've been over, but hopefully uh, hopefully, you figured it out. The other update with the cooling system is after I power flush it a number of times and did that other treatment, I noticed in the top of the radiator, I've got a ton of circulation. Like that shit is just ripping around in there now. So it definitely did something. I'm not sure what else is left in there, but it is what it is. The only thing I can do is continue to flush, and uh, it's getting real late in the year for that kind of shit. Um, it's supposed to snow here next week, so hose is going to be off limits here shortly. The uh, temperature is going to plummet tomorrow. So I'm anticipating this will be the absolute last day I'll get to work on it this year. Uh, so thanks for tuning into the Gen Set series. I'm not done with it. I got way too much money invested in it now to give up. So uh, next time it's nice enough, I'll continue flushing and get the new hoses and everything put on it, and we'll see where we get. But at least we got at least we got good coolant flow now, and then we'll get Mark back. We'll load bank it again and see how she does and go from there. But anyway, it's been fun. Ton of stress trying to get this thing done before winter, but. It's here, it's painted, she's ready to go now. It can sit here all winter, no issues. It's out of my way. Thank you guys for watching. Um, thanks to everybody that bought something on the website. Really appreciate it. Paid for some Napa paint, etc. cetera. Uh, Cause I just got a pile of money tied up in this thing now. But I really appreciate all you guys watching and everything else. I hope you enjoyed this series. A little out of my normal, we, we use a truck channel, but hey, I'll fix anything with a two stroke in it. And uh, good excuse to build a backup generator for the house so stay tuned there'll be more coming i'm not sure what i'm going to do the videos are going to get sporadic here in the winter time because i ain't got a whole lot going on two stroke work gets real thin in the winter <laughs> nothing starts so hopefully bring you some cool videos we'll see what happens thanks again uh hats are in stock shirts are in stock hoodies in stock i got a ton of keychains guys buy them up they're all on the website Thanks again. We'll see you in the next one.